Hi there, everybody. How are you? Um, good to see you again. And uh, yeah, I'm back in Paris, as I was last week and a few weeks before. Not exactly sure how long, how much longer this is going to last, but probably until late October. And then the plan is to come back to New York, uh, go vote, and record Hi there, the. Uh, Goldberg Variations Variations Project, this, the second half of it, the uh, Variations 15 or 16 through 30, while the election is happening. <clears throat> does that sound like a good idea to you, or does that sound totally insane? Let me know. Um, bonsoir, Jan Detour. Hi, Marlia Rees. Uh, hi, Lori Wilson. Hi, Daniele Prolong. Um, Hi, Jan Zamaski and Teresa Sewell. So nice to see you all. Uh, hi, Joyce. Hi, Alan. Julie. Egul. Jen. Henry. Hi. Um, and Silvano. Uh, great to see you all. So, um, you know, it was, it was Monk's birthday a few days ago. Thelonious Monk's birthday. So, of course, I got to play something by Thelonious Monk. Um, maybe I'm going to play um yeah i think i'm gonna play a song by him called work this is a kind of a thorny song of his uh not not one of the ones that's played all that often but uh it's a really great one so here we go Thelonious monk's work
a little Thelonious Monk to start the day. How about that? Um, that's such a, such a fun, fun song, I think. Um, maybe I'll play another one. Maybe I'll play another one. How about, um, how about Monk's Round Midnight? I played you a relatively obscure Monk tune. Now I'm going to play you a very famous uh, Monk tune. Um, Round Midnight. Yeah, here we go. Thank you. 
Brahman Night by Thelonious Monk. Um, kind of a perfect song, right? Um, thanks for being here, everybody. I'm always amazed every time. Amazed that you're here. And uh, Paul James Brown is here. You don't even have to remind me that it was Monk's birthday this week, Paul. I know you always know everybody's birthday, but that's one that I got. Um, Silvano Raffo asks, how do you describe blithely oblivious as a definition? Um, Silvano is referring to a tweet I tweeted earlier today where I asked, if I were to finish the second half of the Goldberg Variations in uh, Bach upside down format between late October and mid-November while the election and whatever insanity is going to go along with the election is happening, then uh, would that be a blithely uh, oblivious or two a welcome counterpoint. Hope you see what I did there with counterpoint since I'm playing Bach. Uh, most people voted for a welcome counterpoint, but uh, there's like 7% of people who've, uh, who are voting for blithely oblivious. Yeah, um, it's not obvious whether it makes sense to do that during this crazy time, but you know, in some ways maybe times of crisis are also the best times to remind ourselves of what keeps us afloat. Um, so anyway, that's how I'm choosing to look at it. I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for it. Um, yeah, uh, Joyce Glasgow says, I love your evocative intro, setting the mood, quiet, dark, black cat on cobblestones, the world is asleep. <laughs> love it, thank you. Um, last week, I think it was um, Frank Geyer, I don't even know if he's here this week, but who asked me if I would play something um, really fast. And, um, oh, he is here. Hi, Frank. Um, yeah. He asked if I could do something really fast. And I thought, yeah, what a good suggestion, because it's true that I feel like these live streams can sometimes sometimes get into a really um, kind of contemplative place. And uh, I thought I'd do something really fast. Um, how about how about giant steps, but really fast? Um, let's try that.
Ah. So that was some fast music, um, special for Frank Geyer. A little bit of exercise. Molly Shen says, um, this is not soothing for my jumbled soul. Feels more like a crackled reflection of the ideas rattle, rattling around in my cranium. Yeah, I can certainly understand that. So I'll tell you what, let's um, do something soothing for our jumbled souls. How about that? Um, yeah, let's do that. Let's do something soothing for our jumbled souls. I think I'm going to improvise a, um, a song. Here we go.
da di do da Popodowo wyznał główki na lolorle do to ty Was that a little more, a little more relaxing? I hope so. Um, it felt relaxing to me. And in some ways, you know, maybe it felt even more relaxing because I played a very fast song before. I mean, everything's about tension and release, right? That's kind of like the, the building block that everything is founded on. You can't have oscillation without tension and release. You can't have music without tension and release, even at the most microscopic level. Um, Marlia says, so soothingly deliberate and contemplative as if you said jazz meet plain song. Wow. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah. Plain song. You know, this idea of sacred music versus profane music is so interesting to me. I don't think I ever told you guys about how years ago I, um, I was kind of at a tough spot in my life, actually. And uh, I decided to go to Cuba uh, for two weeks, or I think I did three weeks the first time, and study rhythm there. And um, while I was there, I, I, um, I met a, a great Cuban singer, um, Yannette Valdez, and um, she brought me to um, Bata, ceremonies. So these are religious ceremonies in the Santeria tradition, uh, in the Santeria religion, where um, a person will hold the ceremony at their home. And it's, it's kind of a mix between a ceremony and a party because um, all their friends come. And the ceremony is in honor of, of the particular god or goddess that the host um, is associated with. Because when you enter that religion, you, you get a god or a goddess. And um, they always hire a bata band. So that's uh, three people, usually men, uh, playing these bata drums. And they play the most incredible, intricate, complex music. I mean, it's just amazing. The, the bata music tradition is very, very ancient, straight from, from Africa. And um, it's, it's really spectacular. But what really struck me is they're playing this complex music, but the entire purpose of it, there's not one part of it that's about showing off um, that you can play many notes or um, that you can be uh, impressive with your music. Uh, it's all about trying to solicit, trying to elicit a spiritual response in the audience. It's about trying to create a sense of the divine in the people present. And um, I, think, I think that's pretty amazing because 
really, why should music ever be for anything else? You know, I mean, music should always be for that, right? So that's kind of what I try to learn from that, and uh, what I uh, what I try to keep alive um, when I'm playing. Uh, Lee Konitz was very much about that too, and and many of my the musicians I really admire are able to really go to that place every time they play. Um, Molly Chen says, "Yes, great contrast. Must have variety. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, you gotta have variety in life and in music." Um, Paul James Brown says, "You need to get with a lyricist. There's a marvelous poet living there who used to be on Maui. I guess you mean in Paris. Her name Margot Bredeshevsky." All right, I'll uh, maybe I should get with a lyricist, or I'll just keep learning Joni Mitchell songs. Um, okay, I feel like I should play something else now. Um, Molly Shen says, "Dan, your lighting seems different today. You're lit like a Rembrandt painting." Well, see, the weird thing about what, where I am here is that every time I do a live stream, I have to uh, take everything down afterwards because the space is in use a lot. The rest of the time um, so basically every time I set up it's gonna be different uh, not really on purpose to be honest <laughs> um, Silvano Raffo says would you try to improvise something recalling that sensation the drums yeah what a great idea Silvano you often have really great uh, suggestions yeah I'm gonna do that okay I'm gonna do I'm gonna do a free improvisation trying to um, recreate some of that feeling that that Cuban bata drums create okay okay here we go
Mike Seitz says, lost him. Hopefully that was only Mike and not everybody else. Um, yeah, that was a, a free improvisation on the Bembe Clave, which is and it's, which has got to be one of the oldest traditional rhythms and it pervades um, so much of, of uh, Afro-Cuban music. Um, so I don't know if you, if you noticed, um, but um, the last few live streams, I've been on a, bit of, a, little, a little bit of a Joe Henderson kick. Um, Joe Henderson, great jazz saxophonist uh, and composer. He's, um, I mean, the people who know really love Joe Henderson, but I feel like he, he's a little underrated considering how incredibly great he was. And he doesn't have that many imitators, strangely. I mean, there are people who have pieces of him, but you know, the way Charlie Parker has millions of Im imitators and John Coltrane has millions of imitators and so does, uh, you know, uh, Michael Brecker. Um, Joe Henderson is kind of harder to capture. But anyway, I thought I'd play, um, I thought I'd play another, another Joe Henderson song. Um, Mark Hilliard Wilson says, Bembe, I didn't know that had a name so cool. That had a name so cool to learn this. Thanks. Well, not quite sure I understand, but uh, yeah, that is a cool name. It's the Bembe Clave. Bop, 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 bop. As I've uh, actually pointed out before on these live streams, that was a long time ago, if you count the number of eighth notes between each one of the beats of the bembe, ba, 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 one, two, one, two. Uh, if you count how many spaces there are between each one, it's the same amount of spaces as there are in the major scale. Like one, two, one, two, one, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, right? It's like two, two, one, two, 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 one. And same with a bembe clave. It's ba ka ta ka ta ka ta ka ta ka ta ka ka. Bembe clave and the major scale are one and the same, exactly the same thing. But um, one is expressed in rhythm, and one is expressed in uh, pitches. Crazy, right? Um, Frank Geyer says, "How do you spell that right?" Bembe is B E M B E. Yeah, that's correct. Okay, I'm going to play a Joe Henderson song. Um, this is one of his wildest songs, um, super cool composition, and it's called um, Inner Urge. Thank you. 
Inner Urge by the great Joe Henderson. How, how about that? Isn't that, a, isn't, that a fun, isn't that a fun melody? Um, I really dig that. There's something, I, I actually don't really understand how it's structured. I need to spend a little more time thinking about what he was, how he was considering the harmony in there. Um, but it just works so well. It, it really works well. Uh, and that there's something so fresh about that melody. I, I feel like it's not, it's not dated at all. It's something still feels super hip about it. Um, I just love it. It's great. Um, Inner Urge by Joe Henderson. Um, Paul James Brown asks, when is the next live stream? And I think, Paul, you mean the next ticketed live stream, right? I'm still figuring that out. Uh, thanks for asking. But I'm going to um, hopefully have something to announce uh, soonish. Uh, Paul says, there is no better way to begin a day, week, or celebrate the beauty of art. Mahalo nui loa dan, you the best. Oh man, thank you so much, Paul. <laughs> it's really my pleasure. I'm grateful to be able to share this with you guys every week. Um, Dan Co Dave Kaufman says, excellent. I think that's his signature tune from his Blue Note days. Yeah, totally agree. Totally agree. That's definitely... Um, his, I mean, I would say that's probably his signature tune of all time at this point. It's probably the, the, the song that we think of, that we most associate with him. Maybe that and Record a May, which I played last week. All right, what are we going to do now? Um, what would you guys like to hear? Um, I, I started to learn Hejira by Joni Mitchell. <laughs> <laughs> totally on a, on a Joni Mitchell kick. And actually, um, Joyce Glasgow sent me a video of an excerpt of Joni Mitchell singing Hejira with Herbie Hancock and Wayne Shorter. And uh, let's see, who else is there? Um, yeah, it's kind of wild because it's a little too fast, actually, on, 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 that, on that video. Um, it's, it's not like an official video. It's kind of like part of a documentary or something. But, uh, but I think the original of Hijira is such a freaking masterpiece. I don't think I can fully do it justice um, today, but I'm going to do that next week, continue on the, on the Joni Mitchell kick. Um, Jonathan Glass asked for 547. Oh, Daniele Prolong. Oh, by the way, I noticed that Daniele Prolong became a Patreon of mine on um, Patreon. Uh, this week. Thank you so much. Um, and thanks to, um, to all of you who, who have, who have uh, supported me on Patreon or elsewhere uh, all this time, or, or even recently. I, I really appreciate it. I should get better at, um, at calling out your names, actually. That's something I really need to start doing because I'm, I'm really grateful. Um, Daniela Prolong says, for contrast, are you, as you're still in Paris, how about some Michel Legrand? Um, I think the only Michel Legrand song that I know is, um, I must know some others, but I'm, I'm thinking of, um, um, what's that called again? Um, you Must Believe in Spring. Hey, maybe I'll play that. How about that? Yeah. Alan Haggard uh, posted the link to my Patreon. Thank you. I'll, um, I'll play, um, I'll play You Must Believe in Spring. Here we go. Or maybe I should sing it. How about that? Yeah, I'll sing it. When lonely feelings chill the meadows of your mind Just think if winter comes, can spring be far behind? Beneath the deepest snows, the secret of a rose is merely that it knows you must believe in spring 
just as a tree is sure, its leaves will reappear. It knows its emptiness is just the time of year. Beneath the deepest snows, the frozen mountain dreams, how crystal clear it seems. You must believe in spring. You must believe in love and trust it's on its way. Just as the sleeping rose awaits the kiss of May. So in a world of snow, of things that come and go, where what you think you know, you can't be certain of. You must believe in spring and love. believe in love and trust it's on its way just as the sleeping rose awaits the kiss of May so in a world of snow of things that come and go where what you think you know you can't be certain of you must believe in spring You Must Believe in Spring by Michel Legrand. I actually, I should know who wrote those English lyrics because they're really nice. I think they're, they're kind of lovely, really beautifully constructed lyrics. Um, let's see, what was I gonna do before? Um, there was another request, I can't remember. Um, Oh yeah, Jonathan Glass asked for 547, which is a song of mine. 
Um, maybe I'll play that. It's a nice request. I mean, I've played that um, a number of times on these live streams, but, but it's been a while, actually. And I haven't played it on any of my ticketed live streams. Well, actually, that's not true. I think I've done it on a couple. Anyway, it's been a while. I'm going to play 547. This is a composition of mine. 547. It's all about um, stretching four events over five, over seven, um, and uh, kind of enjoying that feeling of stretch and compression.
547 uh, composition by me. Thanks for that request, um, Jonathan Glass. Jonathan, I've mentioned many times, is one of my favorite artists. Uh, amazing improvi improvisational uh, illustrator. Um, Carol Despain McGoffin says, love 547. Well, thank you, Carol. I'm glad you're happy to hear that again. Um, oh, and Daniele Prolong says, one day I hope you'll play Hindi Hex. Okay, that's a great request. I'll play that next week. That's another one of my compositions for my last trio record from, um, from 11 Cages, Hindi Hex. That's a, that's a really fun one. Um, Mary Keller says, hi, Dan. I tune in late. Not sure if you're feeling like fooling around with classical pieces today but I bet you could really rock some Chopin, like one of the weirder mazurkas. Loving this opportunity to tune into your world. Thank you. I'm glad that you could tune in. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I actually did that when I was a kid. Um, I did a concert It was when I was at the conservatory. I played um, a couple of the Chopin nocturnes and improvised between them. It's kind of what got me started on this whole idea of improvising on classical repertoire. Um, I don't have any Chopin under my fingers right now, unfortunately, even though he's one of my favorite composers. But I also did a concert a couple years ago um, with, uh, with a great uh, classical pianist who, who also won the American Pianist Association Awards, Sean Chen. And he was playing, um, I think, what, what was he playing? Um, pieces by Chopin. I can't remember which ones they were. And I was improvising in between. And uh, yeah, that was pretty fun because his music's great and it's full of really memorable themes that are just perfect for improvising on. Um, Mary Keller says, you stopped me in my tracks again and forced me to find my headset and sit down. <laughs> Good. <laughs> great. Um, well, I think, I think we're... Uh, getting to the end of the stream. Um, Marilia, Mar Marlia uh, Reese says, you made that stretching feel so well right. I'm glad you felt that. The stretching is kind of essential to that song, to 547, the one I just played. Love the sense of anticipation and resolution around each element, tension release indeed. Yeah, that's the idea, right? It's like if you've got five over four, I mean four over five, which is dun, dun, and then you go seven. One, then we go back to five. It just there's, there's something about it that feels like we're we're kind of going up a level and down a level. You know, it's like we're in this one place and then we're in this other place, and yet they're not too obvious. You know, so um. So yeah, glad, glad you felt that stretching and compression. <clears throat> um, yeah, um, Silvana Rafa says, Chopin and Impro sounds great. Hope to hear that in the future. Um, and Jan Zamoski says, is the concert you just mentioned to be found online? What is the concert I just mentioned? Oh, the one with Sean Chen. No, I don't think so. I don't think it was filmed. It was um, in New York City maybe four or five years ago. Um, okay, I got to play something to, to end this. Um, you guys have any ideas? Let me know. <laughs> Troy Glasgow says you need some castanets. <laughs> <laughs> castanets are hard. I've tried using them before. It's like a whole like technique to, to making them work. Um, yeah, let me know if you have some requests. Um, and otherwise, I think I might, um, I think I might play another free improvisation. Um, Mark Hilliard Wilson says, do you play any Piazzolla? Ooh, that's a great request. Wow. Yeah. Um, I do. I have played some piazzolla, but I don't know if I could do it justice right this second. Um, yeah, I think I would have to. I would have to look. I would have to sit down with those songs for for a minute because they're very, um, 
very kind of detailed and thorny. Daniele Prolong requests every time we say goodbye. That's perfect. I'm going to do every time we say goodbye. That's a perfect song. And I'll play you some piazzola next week. Okay, so next week I'm going to do Hindi Hex and some piazzola. And I'm going to do Hajira by Joni Mitchell. Yeah, um, that'll be fun. And for now, I'm going to do the great Cole Porter's every time we say goodbye.
Every Time We Say Goodbye by the great Cole Porter. And with that, it's time to say goodbye. Um, great request for the last song of the evening or of the morning or of the afternoon, depending on where you are. It was, as usual, uh, a real pleasure to play for you. Thanks, thanks to you all for tuning in. Really uh, just love these exchanges that we have every week. And um, I'll be back next week. We even have a plan for some things I'm going to play. So uh, I hope you have a really wonderful week. Hope you're all staying healthy and uh, your loved ones are healthy and not, too, not going too crazy with uh, these weird times. And uh, look forward to seeing you next week. Take care until then, you guys. Okay.